you guys see that temple um, in the distance, and there's it's just like a natural cavern floor uh, that is kind of worn away with time. There's water kind of dripping from the cavern above you, and small pools of water have collected. There's heavy moss along the ground, and this place feels like it's been untouched for a very long time. And again, you see a partial symbol uh, above. You already kind of, well, you kind of know uh, through uh, Zephyr that there, she believes it to be another temple to an old god that is long dead, uh, Valsharun. Uh, don't know a lot about that. You don't know a lot about that. That's the first she's ever told you about it. You didn't even really know what that meant. Um, anyway, so that's what you see. What do you do? Um, I would like to roll. I'm not sure what it would be. To um, see if I noticed any like footprints or if anyone's been here recently. Sure, make a survival check. Twenty. You're rolling pretty good tonight. Yeah. Wow. All right, so the threat of death makes you roll better. I swear, <laughs> like I'm not rolling bad sense. Your your twenty your dice only has fifteen to twenty on it. Yeah. <laughs> I bought it for her after I felt bad. Um, <laughs> so you. Do a quick search around, and you can see disturbance in the natural moss on the ground that's formed here over the last, you know, couple hundred years. Um, not a lot, though. You would guess that maybe a few people have been down here um, fairly recently. Hmm. Can I? No, I won't know. <laughs> it's gonna make it. A religion check, but I'm not good at that. What are you? What, what is it? So Sashaya, <laughs> he says at this point, he's like, "I'm gonna wait here. Um, I'm." Yeah, you're not supposed to come with us. Yeah, she told me that, so I wasn't about to. I'll wait here for you for <clears throat> a couple of hours. Um, he hands the map back to you. Do you think you'll be able to find your way back with the map in the way that I've shown you? Because if you're not back in a couple of hours, I really need to get back to our den. I'm, I'm a little concerned. Okay, you know, that's totally fair. Um, wait for us as long as you can, um, just in case. Okay. But yeah, stay here. Stay safe. Will do. Um, before we head in there, and um, with him, Sashaya still with us, yeah. I want to cast Pass Without Trace, which gives us all a plus 10 bonus to stealth saves. To self stealth rolls? Yes. Okay. So stealth checks. Can't be tracked except by magical means. And you get a plus 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Alex closes her eyes and utters a prayer. And you feel, like, basically your feet feel lighter, even though they are clearly not. And you take a few steps forward, and any indentation that you leave in the ground just kind of fades away in this kind of shadowy mist with every step that you take. Okay, what do you do? How long does it last for? Um, it lasts for up to an hour. Okay. That's more than enough time to get to the temple, for sure. <clears throat> okay. Um, should I do... Sorry. Um, <clears throat> Alright, I am... Def I'm just, can I do a perception as well? Yep. Just to see yeah, if I can well, see anything. Too. Sure. Feel anything. Whoops. Um, okay. Ten. <clears throat> Fourteen. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you guys take a quick look around. You don't see anything out of the ordinary. Um, there is that weird, eerie light here still that was casting off of those those deep yellow sandstones above you. <laughs> and there is kind of that weird... It's It looks like it comes through the cracks and fissures of the cavern above you, and it's not natural light. There is some kind of... It is a magical illumination you're starting to understand because it carries on from that sandstone into this place. And it is like this golden golden light that just barely filters up. It's enough for you to now see by with your with your uh, vision. Uh, and it's a little harder for you, but it's still enough that it, the room is shadows instead of complete darkness. So if I put up this torch, we could still yep. see. Cool. I'm going to do that then okay. so that we can stay a little bit more hidden. And um, yeah, head okay. forward and try to... All right, so you guys, before you use, are you sneaky? Um, I would recommend we be sneaky. Okay, so go ahead and make your stealth check to get a plus 10 to this roll because... Wow. Uh, 13. Oh. Uh, wait, hold on. 
Nope. 18. Okay. 29. <laughs> plus 10. Yeah. Plus, uh, plus your normal stealth. 23. Wow. Yes. Very, very sneaky. <laughs> Finally, when no one can see me, that's when all my skills come out. <laughs> <laughs> so you creep forward and um, continue towards this the, the opening that is crumbled but there's still the passage to get in it's wide enough that you can kind of each go in individually you don't have to like squeeze through we'll save you guys the trauma of that <laughs> save the broken rib yeah and uh you who's going in first i will volunteer because i have danger sense okay so you crouch down and you pull yourself through that fairly quickly <clears throat> You get to the other side and it opens up. A lot of it has fallen in, um, but immediately the this natural cavern, it is cut stone. And you can see a lot of the, the roof has been pushed through with the natural rocks so that have obviously the, the infrastructure has fallen in on itself and just revealed the actual stone that it was cut from. And there's big chunks of it laying around everywhere. And it's a long corridor that after about 50 feet, and that natural light is here too through the different cracks in the ceiling and even in the walls and it's dead quiet in here you can't hear anything in the distance and because you have that pass without trace you're moving very quietly at the end it opens up into a, a larger room mostly fallen in you, you can see the debris in large chunks in the distance um, but the room looks fairly empty from what you can see but you're not sure how big it is you could just be seeing like the tunnel like just what's ahead of you but there could be wider that's all you see at this point. The rest of you fall in behind, and the ground itself is very sturdy, but you can see that dust does kind of fall from the ceiling every so often. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Just be careful of... It, look, it looks like it's clear, but be careful of uh, falling debris. Just go sneaky. <clears throat> Tread lightly. Okay, so do you continue forward? Yeah. The three of you continue on forward and into into the quiet, and you eventually get to the end of this tunnel, and it looks at, as you get to the edge, you can see that it is about 50 feet wide um, from one end to the other, and it looks like this would have been like the main entrance area of the temple where people would have gathered for just like for the, the meetings and, and stuff like that, but that would have been hundreds and hundreds of years ago. There were statues here, they're all shattered, pieces of them have been crumbled. Um, you know, you can't really make up what they were, but they probably stood about 20 feet high, um, made of this really beautiful marble, but it's all smashed to pieces now. The only thing you can really see is a door on the far end that is, the hinges are there and shards of stone, it looked like it would have been a heavy stone door at some time, are still hanging in the, in the infrastructure, but it's all crumbled, so you could easily climb over what remains and continue further on into the temple. Okay. Um, Did somebody check the door? Can perception past there, see if we see anybody? Sure. Are you going to go up to that far door? I'll go. Okay. Oh, so. <laughs> um, 15? So you cross across, you cross this open expanse, like I said, it's about 50 feet to that door. And the statues that are shattered are lined up on either side of you. And as you go, you can see that, just with your perception check, you take a look around and you can see that you're getting, a th there's a theme to the pieces that are kind of remaining behind. And it looks like all of them are related to, um, it's like a skeletal. Of various creatures, um, not just humans, but you know, elven scale structure is different. It's all different types. There's about a dozen of them that are shattered, but you can see that that's what they would have been at one time. Some of the heads are still intact. Uh, the heads are giant, probably weigh 100, 200 pounds, easy. And uh, but they're all smashed. That's what you notice as you go. As you watch her, and she's looking back and forth. And you are in a very ancient place. And you get to that stone door and you pull yourself up over the remnant of it and look in and that same eerie golden light casts down and you can see it ends in a stone staircase that goes down. Okay. Looks like the way's all clear through here, but uh, 
I'm not gonna like this, but just a staircase. Some sort of basement or something? Mm, of course. Um, did you say that the skeletons were smashed? Yeah, like, like these stat- they're, like they were giant statues of skeletons that have been smashed. They would have been about 20 feet high at one point. Just pieces and remnants is what you are able to see standing there. Are they naturally falling apart, or have they been yeah. like intentionally smashed Yeah, that's smashed what I want to know. Um, if you had a dwarf, this would be a lot easier. Yeah. So uh, with stone sets. Yeah, so you you can make an insight check. Yeah, that's what I was trying to Oh, oh nat, two. nat 20, so. 22. What'd you get? 22? Yeah, 22. Yeah, 21. 21. Insight. 22, yep. 20, 20, 20, 20. Okay, so. Yeah, 22. You all said an all-know about Yeah, you're like, oh, at the same time. <laughs> you're pretty sure that these are probably um, destroyed. They haven't... They, they, the structure of them and how heavy they were and the marble itself would easily stand for a thousand mm, years if wear. left. Yeah. It, yeah, it wouldn't crumble on there. So they have been destroyed. I feel like we're in the right place. Somebody didn't yeah. like the, the decor. Well, remember the skeletons in the sewer? Yeah. Well, I'm, the... I'm imagining these probably could come to life and that's why that maybe they got smashed. Maybe, or maybe they're just a symbol of... Yeah, they're not... Room, like... They're not made out of... They're not... Weren't alive, they're just a statue. So oh no, but I mean, maybe they destroyed it because they didn't want it to come alive. Very suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you you meet up with Alex, who's looking over, peering into the into the tunnel. The three of you are now at that uh, that doorway mm-hmm. that you can climb over easily and get into. Okay. Huh. Maybe somebody should take a peek. That's maybe. very sneaky. Maybe someone should. Mm-hmm. Examine the place for traps. I mean, I would volunteer, but we all know <laughs> <laughs> how I'm doing today. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Doors yeah. kind of trip up my TV senses. My doors? Doors. Doors make me scared. Um, okay. can, I, can I examine, like, around the door and make sure that there's no, like, sure. traps or anything sure. within the room? Fifteen. Do I have proficiency with these tools? No, I don't. That's just rogue. Uh, yep. What do I add to that? Uh, well, you might with the trickery domain. I don't know if you get yeah, the. Do, so. do you have these tools written down there? I have it written under proficiencies. If it's written under proficiencies, then you would add your proficiency bonus to it. Okay. You, so you you're a trickster um, cleric, 18. so. So you do a quick search. You pull out a little pouch full of tools to just kind of do like a scan of what you think would be trapped in the store. Uh, this place it is not. If there was ever traps here, they're long gone. Okay, then I will continue forward. Okay, so you crawl up over and she disappears down on the other side of this cracked doorway. Uh, what are the What are you two doing while she does that? Um, you gonna go with her? Yeah, I'll go with her. Give me a boost. Oh yeah, okay, I'll <laughs> you, help you. <laughs> you, you, you boost Shriella over and she clambers awkwardly uh, and falls inside and, and you follow suit. Uh, this corridor is only about 15 feet before that stairwell goes down and Alex is already at the top of this stone staircase. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try to push past Al, so I'll go first. I want to go first. <laughs> Alright, so yeah. Petunia starts going down the staircase. Um, who's second? You can go second. Alright. So Shreela follows suit, and then Alex at the back. I need to roll. I and like no, you don't, need to, like, you don't need to roll. Yeah. To walk downstairs. Well, maybe you should. Yeah. <laughs> and I roll a one. I'm actually, actually, and roll perception. perception. I'm like, no! So you go down... The, uh, the spiral staircase and you think it descends a good 50 feet and eventually it comes to a bottom floor. Um, I guess I'll make perception checks as you get to those bottom stairs. <laughs> so bad at perception. Uh, nine. I got a seven. And you're gonna help us by seeing <laughs> 25. <laughs> it's okay, see? See, I got this. Thank you. It's not a... <laughs> It's not an athletic skill. <laughs> okay, so what did you guys all get? I got 25. Seven. Nine. You got seven? Yeah. 29? No. No, seven. I got nine. You got nine, got seven. okay. Yeah. So Shreela. Yeah. Yeah, I got 25. So the rest of you, you two don't hear anything. Shreela, you stop. And 
you start to hear music very faintly in from inside you basically are, are you haven't come around the corner yet you haven't got to the bottom of the stairs but you hear this song playing mm. I know this song mm. Petunia do you hear that song you can That's make another listen another check. Yeah. And you go to advantage, because she's okay. stopping you guys from walking further down the stairs. <laughs> Tell me. I get advantage, I rolled the exact same thing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, 16, and then this is um, insight again, or is it? Yeah, uh, perception. Perception? Okay. Um, 20. So you, you hear yeah. it now. <gasps> I know this song. I can play this song on my drums. Yeah, it's the harpy song. Yeah, yeah, Ben's really good at it. Yeah. I remember, I remember the percussion. Do you want me to play it? No, no. <laughs> Someone's already playing it. That's what I mean. Shh. Oh, yeah, I gotta be quiet. Okay. Oh, is the heartbeat down here or Van? Maybe Van's down here. No, Van wouldn't be here. She's pretty. She's got a secret. She can't play without you on drums. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> we think it's a heartbeat. It's a particular harpy, the one that I saw who told me that Malar was coming back, is back. The harpy told me that it walks the earth. This is the song that she was playing. I thought we were, we were sent here to figure out what was going on with Belcher Wounds. Well, maybe they've already come. Like, maybe they've already gotten together with Malar. Because they're all trying to get with Malar. Like, Char said she needed to reunite with Malar. So I think... I know that this is the same song. Yeah. Well, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Huh. There should still only be a couple people down there. So if they've got music going on, maybe they won't hear it. Yeah. Oh no, we didn't hear that, did we? That Van's mom was singing this. Nope. nope. Okay, yeah. Okay, never mind. That wasn't, yeah. Was in, yeah. Uh, we are clueless. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we are totally clueless. Alright, um, well, that means down there, for sure. I, mean, I don't know what the song means, but it's, you know. I, I kind of like the song, but, oh, maybe, maybe Shara is down here. Not Shara Lamar. Well, either one, I want to meet them. No, you don't. You do. Come okay. on, guys, we've been wrong enough with all the rope climbing. Let's okay, go. okay, we'll just go. All right, so you guys continue on down, and you get to the end of the stairs, and I'm gonna just turn the the music down for now. Um, but you hear the music continue on in the background. Actually, I'll just turn it down so it's not too loud. I really like it. <laughs> I do actually really like it. <laughs> um, you hear the music continuing, and there's a doorway. An ancient stone door that is currently closed. You can hear the music drifting out from underneath this stone door at the bottom of the stairs. And it's loud, but as you hear the song, there's an aspect to it that's different. This is a more mournful version of it, as though whoever's singing it is in pain. Can you hear anything else? You can make a perception check. Oh, you're at the door. Yeah. Can we see it again? You can't see anything. You can just, there's a light coming from underneath the door as oh, well. Okay. 16. 9. 12. The song is, is it's not super loud, but it, if there is more sound coming in there, it's not being, it's being drowned out by the singing. Do we recognize the voice? No. I mean... There's no way of getting in that room. This is is what we need to get to, right? Yeah. It's the only way we can go. Okay. Are we... Does the Pass Without Trace still work on us? Is that so long? Yeah. It hasn't been an hour yet. Okay. Who's opening the door? Mm, 
Let's look at everybody's still. I think I'm probably opening the door. I'm, I'm plus two. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not opening it. the door. <laughs> okay, plus make your stealth, and you can add plus the uh, plus, plus ten. And I don't think it technically applies, but I'll let it. Um, thirteen plus yeah, it's plus the ten twenty three. Yeah. Okay. So you just, it's a heavy door, and you push it open as quietly as you can, and it doesn't make a noise. How far do you want to push the door open? Um, like, shoulders sideways. Okay, (laughs) so you push it a few inches open, enough that you can peek your head in. I'm going to take a look. So you're going to put your head through and look? Uh, Yes. Okay, so Alex... Pushes it away really and you see her head happen. peek inside. Go ahead. Oh. Oh, I thought so. I, should I re-roll that? That. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we have this. All right, the statue has been used. Yay. She gets to re-roll with a plus ten bonus. Seventeen. With the plus ten? No, no. twenty-seven with the plus ten. Okay. Ooh. Plus whatever my like if I was rolling perception. Okay. So you only lose an eye. <laughs> Just your head. <laughs> the door crushes your skull. Um, Bye. You peek your head in as quietly as you can, and it reveals a large library uh, with laboratory equipment on tables and. Immediately, your are, your eyes are drawn to a large pool that is has a cage over top of it, and you can't. Well, actually, with your roll, the liquid itself is black, and there's something inside the liquid inside this caged pool, trying to get out of this icker, and it is a harpy. Tr- is singing her pain. And whatever is covering her, is her feathers are completely drenched in it, and it, it's hurting her. And you keep looking around, and that's when you see a guy come out from behind the bookshelves. And he's reading out of a book. He's muttering to himself. He looks very similar, actually, to the, um, the man, the guardian, that you encountered. His head is shaved. Um, except he has all these weird markings um, all over. It does. It's not tattooed, but he's covered himself. He covered himself in these kind of strange tattoo, kind of looking ritualistic um, images all over. And he's wearing a golden crown on the top of his head, and he's reading and muttering in a language you don't understand. Um, and he's pacing around the harpy's cage. You also see that this room has fallen in on itself a lot. To your right, you can see that there's a table, a couple of tables, but there's a huge uh, part of it that's just fallen in. It's just like a pit behind it. Like that part of that room has collapsed. And also to your, when you just quickly look as best you can to the left, you can see that this whole side is caved in. Like there were statues and pillars there that have just collapsed in um, to that part of the room. What do you do? Okay, um, so I back out of the door and talk to everyone about what I saw. So that music, it's definitely, I think it, there's a harpy in there. You guys were saying it's a harpy song, yeah, right? it was a harpy song, yes. What, I don't know what a harpy would be doing down here. It's definitely not right. Not in the city, not like this. Yeah, harpies are usually outside. Mm-hmm. What is a harpy doing in there? She's trapped. There's a cage in this pool of dark liquid. But there's also a, there's a guy in there, at least the, there's one that I saw. I don't know how many people might be in there. But he's casting some sort of spell or reading some sort of ritual. Oh. I, I feel so sad. She must be hurt. Yeah, that's... He's obviously hurting her. Yeah, it doesn't sound happy. We should probably stop him, or at least get her out of this liquid <clears throat> thing if it's hurting her. Yeah. Well, they didn't. They still don't know we're here. If we move quickly, maybe we can still get the jump on them. Okay. Yeah. Let's get them. Um. What do you do? I um, try to get an attack of opportunity. You're gonna just charge right in. <laughs> We haven't rested right since the last battle, is that correct? Uh, yeah, you would have. Oh, yeah, okay. so you're at full. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got my spells back. 
Yeah, because you rested, <laughs> but then you put lead arrested and then you rested. Yeah. Right, 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 right. I can, did he look human? Mm, I couldn't tell. Yeah, I guess so. He looked kind of like uh, the guardian that showed up earlier. What? Well, there's not one of your people? Not one of my people. They would have been from the same church. Remember, they, they splintered off, so they probably still look. And he, he's, he's Mulhorandi descent. Okay. He has the. He looks like uh, like he's from here. I could I could cast old person. I could grapple one. You could cast gold person, and if you can get the heartbeat out. Well, or, we could talk to you. We could ask them what's going on, and if they yeah. don't, if they don't tell us, okay. Well, oh. okay. <laughs> they don't tell us. Hurry, like, hurry. Okay. Shh, shh. okay, let's do this. Let's go, old person. Okay, so so you push the door open. Quietly or quietly. just throwing it? No, okay. quietly. No, quietly. Alright, so you have your same role. You just push nope. it open quietly. You're all st- kind of standing at the door and you're already starting to cast your spell. So, you're both all standing there and he slowly turns his head and he looks at you, but you get your spell off. What is his saving throw? Do you think get, what kind of save does he get against it? Let me just double check. <clears throat> Wisdom saving throw. You channel the magic and push it straight towards him, and you feel the magic connect with him, and his his body goes rigid, and he throws his head back, and uh, shakes it off. Not in my domain. What? All right. So <laughs> oh, no. Uh-oh. He the harpy continues to sing. And he brandishes a wicked looking, almost like a scimitar, but like a, a short version of it. Um, and he starts going towards the harpy uh, cage, straight towards it. And she's she's crying out this song of pain. And that's what he does. What do you guys do? <clears throat> um, I yell, stop, what are you doing? Okay, he doesn't stop. He goes and rips open the cage, and he oh. takes the knife, and he's going to stab forward with okay, it. Okay, well, then I'm going to hurl. Roll, roll initiative. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, hurl your javelin. <laughs> okay, let me take out. Um, so 19 plus 5, 22. 22. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, and as he does that, he mutters something under his breath in a language you also don't understand, and you can hear clacking something coming up from the darkness in all directions and he turns around and says rise my children rise man <laughs> okay what'd you roll i rolled 19 what'd you roll i rolled four i rolled 11 so and then what's the creeps <laughs> he's going on three nice Ooh, last okay so his minions go on 19. Okay, oh, same who as has me. Dex? Oh, what's your dex? Uh, minus 3. So you go first. Okay. But gets the first action. So, right. this you can see on the screen now, ladies. Oh. Far away am I? Shriella, Alex, and then Creep. Well, actually, Shriella was in the room casting the spell. Where is my Alex figure? Um, that is what you see rising up out of the darkness, out of those crevasses and the holes that have fallen in in this place. Skeletal hands reach up out of the ground and start clambering up the side and move with purpose towards you. But Petunia goes first. Yeah, what are those ones like um, <coughs> over there t- near the uh, the <coughs> creep guy? They're all skeletons. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, it's just, it's just like another black loop over this there. This is the um, yeah the dude. Yeah. Okay, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay. Cool. Um. So, um, Justin. Right? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25... You can look on the screen here too. Oh, okay. Whichever is easier for you to see. Oh, is it 30 feet? It's hard to tell because of the table. <laughs> I 
I'm going to I'm going to say oh, I'm sure one of those necromancers that you're an injustice to nature and I go, I'm going to go into rage Okay. and then I <laughs> every time <laughs> and then I um, I'm going to take actually a movement Okay. where do you want to go? First, I'm going to I can move, oh I can move far now 35, I'm going to go right up to him so you're going to have to leap over the table. Yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and onto another table, 30. So you're going to have to make two athletics checks to see if you can do it without losing movement. You can do it. I can do it. Two skeletons only working in the darkness. Oh, no, there's light. Okay. There, right? uh, okay, so it's... Mm, yeah, I think you have advantage on this because you're raging. 15, 15. Well, that's 15. Okay, that's fair. Right, next um, one. 12. Okay, so... Six, seven, eight. So 18. All right. Yeah. So describe to me how you move across. Do you slide under? Do you go over? Tom, give me some cinematics. I'm going right to. Uh, I'm just, and then I'm just gonna grab my short sword and, a, and then run straight forward like this. And then as soon as I go see a table, yeah, just jump up on it. Okay. Just kick all the stuff off of it. Yeah. And then just jump down. Keep running at him. Jump back, jump up, back onto up onto another table, yeah. and you're right now level with him because you're standing on the table. And he sees you charging, and you can see now that the the paint and stuff, it's all in, like, there's mixtures of, of black and gold. And when you get close to him, you can see that his veins are lit up from underneath with a yellowish light. Ew. <laughs> what do you do? Make your attack? Yep. Go ahead. Ooh, plus six. <laughs> Oh, so that would be um, 25. You, with one hand with your, are you using a short sword, you said? Uh, long sword. Long sword? Yeah. You slash at him and you connect, roll your damage. Oh, so then I'm um, <laughs> Thank goodness I get a plus five now. Or, yeah. um, so that would be six. All right. You hack at him, and he's wearing, he is wearing, like, um, armor. It's a breastplate. He's not wearing, like, full armor. He does have a breastplate on. And you cut through the heavy armor. You jam the sword in, and it cuts through and pierces him. And you can pull it out, and blood spits out of it. And it's a dark red blood. And the blood arcs up. I believe you have a second attack. I get a second attack. I'm like, bah. <laughs> bah. Die, you necro scum. <laughs> and... So that would be a bug and a plus uh, six. Mm-hmm. So, um, 18? That hits. All right. Oh, um, just making a wall right there. So I have... Oh, oh okay. one on my so damage. Um, so again, it is a six in damage. So. All right, you hack him in the exact same place, and rip your sword back out, his blood spits out of the wound again, you deepen it, and he staggers back a little bit, but he seems like he's all right. All right, skeletons. Um, they clamber out and run at a good speed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna surround it. Oh, I have total spirit too. Oh, wow. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Alright. Here they go. Just let me get my stats here. First attack, um, so they're teaming up, so they get advantage. One of them does. The first guy gets advantage. Two attacks on Shirela, um, you have your quarter staff out, and you knock one of their heavy swords away, and then the other one comes up around you, and you feel like a whoosh of air, and you bring up your quarter staff at the last second, and you thuck, it hits, it cuts deep into your quarter staff halfway oh. through it, and you push it down at the last second. The one runs right past Shirela, comes at you, ah, with his uh, heavy sword, and it's an attack. Uh, that is a hit. Okay. Now you take three points of damage. You manage to use a shield, right? Mm-hmm. So you manage to bring up your shield, and it cleaves through the top of it, cuts down about an inch, and he cuts through your armor and just gives you a, a tiny cut on your shoulder bone, and he tries to push down, but you're strong enough to bat him back with the shield, and he staggers back a little bit. Uh, two attacks on Petunia. Um, one hit. Mm-hmm. Take eight points of damage. Remember, you're raging, so half. half. So 
So four. So he gets you good. He, this is the one that comes up behind you, and he's got um, like this kind of rusted out looking axe, and he hits you in the side, cuts through your breastplate armor right into your ribs, and you just kind of push it away and snarl at him. Um, that's it. Who's next? That's me. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to tuck my quarter staff away, grab my shield, and evoke my flame blade. Okay. And is that a... It's a bonus action. It's a bonus action? Yeah. Okay, so... And I start slicing the two that attacked me. Okay, so which one do you want to hit? The one on the furthest or in front of you? The one in front of me. Okay, go ahead and make your attack. You better roll well now. Ten plus... Uh, Seven, so seventeen. Yep, yeah, that hits. His, his ar- he's got remnants of armor all over him and his tattered shield, and you hack that shield right in half with your flame blade, <laughs> and part of his arm kind of gets cracked. Roll your damage. Three d six. One. <laughs> Three and six. So uh, ten. Ten? Yeah. All right, so it, it explodes in flame, and the actual, you can smell this burning marrow in the air, and it's like it has like a meaty smell to it, and it cuts straight through and turns to dust his arm. His shield arm clatters to the ground, and the bone itself starts to melt from the, the heat. It just blackens and starts to drip, and it falls to the ground. He doesn't feel pain. He's a skeleton. Uh, but he's the magic holding him together has is, is been severely damaged. Um, who's up? Uh, do you want to move at all, or do you want to stay where you are? Uh, how far can you move? She can move. I can move thirty-five. Can. Thirty-five. I but if you move out of their reach, and they get yeah. attacks on you. Uh, yeah, you stay. Oh, I'll stay. I'll stay. Okay. Next. Uh, that's me. Alex. Okay. Um, so I'm going to cast uh, Turn Undead. Okay. That one. Uh, I think they get a spell save. Okay, so it's a wisdom saving throw, right? Or is it a charisma? Uh, wisdom saving. Wisdom. Right. Okay, so how and how far is the range? It's of thirty it? feet. Thirty feet. Okay. One, two, three. I literally rolled a sixteen, a seventeen, and a twenty, but this one failed, and he turns and starts to run out of your reach, which means you get an attack on him before he goes. Okay. Um. So. Can I cast a cantrip? No, not as a spell. A reaction is um, an attack action. Okay, then I will um, hit with my club. Okay, go ahead and make your attack roll. Uh, okay. Unless the spell says you can cast it as a reaction. I don't think so. No. Shillelagh. No. 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 Oh, shit. Um, I something down there. Um... Six. No. You okay. hit, you manage to hit, but it's got like these shoulder uh, and bits of leather armor on its back still, and that's what you impact with the with your club okay. as it runs okay. off. No, uh, I can't see from where I am. No, if I were to exit through there, I'd still get an attack on me, right? Uh, if you go all the way through, yes. If I go like to the left there? Yeah. Yeah, because this one here would get an attack. Because there's a door, right? Yeah. yeah you have to move into the room and then laugh. Yeah. Past the bookshelf. There's a bookshelf there, too. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, fuck. I guess that's it. Do you want to move out of that doorway or into the room, or do you want to stay where you are? Stay where I am. Okay. All right. Next is him. I actually need a player's handbook. I forgot to bring mine oh, well. to my... Do we mine have an extra? literally falling apart. Uh, I didn't bring Oh, a handbook? Yeah. 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 I just need one for this encounter. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, hold on. Don't read my sticky notes. <laughs> All the secrets. I think all of our players' handbooks now are just like notes about how to do better. Don't want you to know that we I know how to quick, do better. I just have a quick tab of like, money sign. <laughs> Please like, 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 <laughs> so, I have everything written down. Like, little notes on what spells are on that and what they do so that I know like quick reference. Quick reference, yeah. Okay. What was I doing? <laughs> you can do a um, 
one of your crack nights of how to like cheat notes, how to do quick cheat note tabs for your player. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you make a. So he starts to player. wave his hand around and he throws his head back, and you can feel you're standing right next, right in front of him on the table. And he starts channeling, and you can see these dark shadows moving around his hands, swirling around. And it almost looks to you, even though you're in a rage, like that energy, that power is coming out of that black ichor, and it's swirling up around him from the pool. And he reaches out to touch you. Uh, things never go well. Oh my gosh, things never go well. If you drop it on the floor, it's a one. Yeah. Uh huh. Make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom? Yep. Is this magic? Um, yeah. Okay, then. I get it's advantage. Not a, it's not a charm or anything, though. Doesn't matter. Cunning, uh, cunning action. Advantage on intelligence, wisdom, or charisma saving throws against magic. Okay. That's what I always ask. Is it magic? So, general. <laughs> huh? Okay, go ahead. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm Okay, um, let me what's my wisdom? Wisdom's not great. Um, <laughs> 12. As he reaches out for you, he utters this weird, strange language and grabs you by the throat. And the one thing you understand as this black energy swirls around your neck and goes up and through into your mouth, he looks straight into your eyes and says in a common tongue that you understand your strength is taken. <gasps> That's my strong point. Um, you, have, no. you have disadvantage now on ability checks and saving throws made with that ability score. Um, you have disadvantage on attacks against him. And something else which you'll find out soon. Mm. What? Give me the book back. <laughs> I need the book! All right. Um, so all of a sudden you feel your strength just wither out of you. You still have your um, rage, but because of disadvantage, it basically negates your advantage on strength checks and stuff like that. It doesn't negate your rage damage or anything, though. But you have disadvantage to attack him in particular. Uh, at that, he, okay. he actually steps back out of your reach, but you get an attack on him at a disadvantage, because he's disengaging from you. Oh, I can only use reckless attack when I'm when I'm actually attacking, yeah. not as a Yeah, this reaction. is a reaction. Okay. <laughs> use reckless attack to negate my disadvantage. Anyway. No. Okay. <laughs> um, alright. Oh my god. So, I can't get worse than... Oh, I'm like, I can't get worse than a two, Did and then I roll a one. one. Oh no. Make a strength saving throw, and you're at a disadvantage <laughs> because of the spell. Actually, no, it's not, because you can normally get an advantage when you're raging, so yeah. you just roll. Okay, so... Seven, 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 okay, so Thirteen. So you swing at him, and you are with as much strength, but now your strength is, is all weird, like your body feels weird, you're out of sync now, you can't... You're trying to figure out... What is happening? You almost th drop your sword, but you manage to just like hang on barely, and you feel the strain in your hand, and you are understanding better now what is happening to you and how your body feels, but you're still completely discombobulated. Um, top of the order, Petunia. Me. Um, I'm still gonna rush him. Okay. Uh, move forward, um, and I'm gonna call a reckless attack. So I get an advantage, so... Okay, so both these guys get attacks as you run past them. Oh. Well, this, just this one does. Yeah. And, and you're doing a reckless attack? Yeah, I'm doing a reckless attack. So he gets advantage. Okay. God damn it. So... Uh, it doesn't matter. He rolled a four and a one. <laughs> Woo! Uh, so he goes and he brings his heavy axe down, and that table that you were on, as you lunge off of it, he hits it and cracks it in half, and the table collapses, and all like the books and everything that were on it just kind of shatter as they fall... Uh, the potions and stuff that were there to shatter as they hit the ground, and um, he misses. But you run forward and make your attack. Okay. You're doing a reckless attack, so you just get to roll whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, I guess it negates my disadvantage. Um, oh, not great. So, um, 12. So you run forward and you charge, and he doesn't have a shield or anything like that, but you hit, you swing, and you hit him dead center of his breastplate, and your blade just deflects off of it and doesn't penetrate his armor. So I'm going to attack again. Okay. Oh, why am I rolling so low? 
<laughs> so that's, yeah, I didn't make it. Right, so you, <laughs> you slash again, and he brings up his dagger that he's carrying as this kind of short blade and deflects your, your attack with, with a really surprising strength. Just hits it aside. Who's up? Your minions. Right. Uh, he pursues through the broken table. And Ew, this, all this <laughs> guy gets here, mm. and this guy charges here. Oh, wow. All right. Actually, this guy's going to push forward, and they're going to push in like that. So two attacks on Alex, two attacks on Shriella, two attacks on Petunia. One is, one of those each is at an advantage. So the first one, advantage attack against Shriella. You feel a blade puncture through your armor and you take four point or five points of damage as the skeleton drives his blade through your armor, cuts Ugh. you deep on your on your side into your ribs. Um, the second skeleton attacks and misses. You get that hit and you bring up your quarter staff at the last second and deflect his hit away, and you can hear two blades swinging behind you as they try to attack Alex. Nat 20. The oh. second attack. A one. <laughs> so, Ooh. a critical hit and a critical miss. But you get critically hit on the first one. Um, uh, so, so, ten points of damage on the critical hit um, as the blade comes straight through, crunches off a part of your shield and cuts through your leather armor, rips a huge part of it open, and cuts the front of your chest uh, down right to the bone. You can feel blood pissing out of it, but you're still standing, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, oh, and then two attacks against Petunia. One's at advantage. Uh, what is your armor class? 18. Uh, just misses. You turn and bring up your shield and feel a, a huge impact, and it staggers you back a little bit. He's a very strong creature. And the other one um, just misses as well. You bring up your sword and deflect his heavy blade away. Uh, you are surrounded on all sides. Mm -hmm. uh, that's their actions. <clears throat> Next is... Shriella. I'm going to look at the creepy man who has been attacking you, and I'm going to cast Moonbeam on him. Okay. Uh, does he get a save? Uh, yeah, constitution saving throw. Okay. What is the difficulty of that? It's on your spell sheet on the back. Uh, 15. Does not, oh wait, 15? Yeah. Yeah, he does make a save. What? Oh, it's a constitution, right? No, yeah. he doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was a will. Yeah, he does. All right, you get you get your full damage. Sweet. So go ahead and roll. So it's five, right? Oh, I need ten. Yeah, ten. So nine and three. So twelve. So this beam of light coalesces at the top of the ceiling and shoots down. You can do this indoors? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. checked. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Shoots, like, I'm oh, I checked. It's you see this yellow light kind of coalesce at the top of the ceiling, all that weird, odd light that was there before. You somehow are able to channel that into a beam of white light, and it shoots down straight on him. He screeches in pain, and you can see that steam rising off of him like this white heat is burning him. And how much did you do then? Total? 12? 12. Okay. That was the coffee. Does that mean that your spell Who's is up? done? Uh, that would be me. No. <laughs> um, okay, Alex. Yeah, you can't move. Um, okay, so I'm going to, as a bonus action, cast Healing Word on myself. Okay. So that's 1d4 plus my what spell cast spell attack bonus? Or? Uh, your spell casting bonus, I believe, which is your wisdom score. Wisdom score bonus. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so I heal four. Okay. Um... And then I am going to, as an action, cast Protection from Good and Evil okay. on Triella, because she's within range and I can touch her. Okay, so you yeah. reach out yeah. and channel a protective spell. What does that do for her? Um, so what that does is I take some holy water and I splash a bit on her. Sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> until the spell ends, which is up to ten minutes, one willing creature you touch is protected against certain types of creatures. Um, I don't know if I choose one. I, it wouldn't be all of them. That's a lot. Um, but undead is one of those. And so I hope this does something. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, creatures of those types have disadvantage on attack rolls against the target. Okay. Um, they also can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. Okay. And how long does that last? Ten minutes. Okay. So you for this combat. Aha. 
right. everyone who attacks me directly is just at a disadvantage. disadvantage. I don't know about yeah. the other dude. But... Kind of yeah. did what the other guy did to me. <laughs> okay, so you cast that spell and you feel this energy kind of push out of you, like this this <laughs> inherently good energy pouring through you and radiating through you. And you can see them stagger back a little bit and turn their heads just even a little bit. Um, yeah. Sweet. Uh, I actually couldn't have attacked this guy because you ca- you cast that spell. So I'm going to take away half that damage I did to you. Even though that guy... Actually, you know that guy still hit you. You would, didn't have a second attack against him. Remember you cast oh, uh, yeah, Control Yeah, he wouldn't again. be able to come with yeah, me. Yeah, so he, f- he just stays there. Okay, so... And yeah, we'll just say he loses his turn that round, but anyway. A roll a one. Yeah, he rolled a one, yeah. Couldn't have been the other guy. Yeah. All right, um, next. Creep. Creep. All right, so he raises his hand up and waves it over top of your head, (laughs) and he has this kind of long, clawed hand that he waves around. And he pushes that black energy out of his hand, and it arcs up over top of you, and swirls around his two counterparts behind him and it completely infuses into their bones and they just kind of they kind of look like their bones thicken and get stronger and uh, that's his action he is going to at that point 5 10 15 20 25 30 and you get an attack on him as your reaction Okay. At a disadvantage. At a disadvantage. Okay. <laughs> so I had to take the five. Okay. Um, yeah. So no, you miss. Uh, he just you swing at him, but you, the him. skeletons start pressing in on you, pushing you back, and he gets away around and, and sneaks around the corner. That's his action. Top of the order. That would do you be me again. Okay. Um. I'm still gonna. I'm just gonna hurl a javelin. Adam? Um, you're, there's there, two right in front of you, uh, right in between, so, so no, well, obviously I'm you can't do that. Move... You can't actually just be at a disadvantage, which okay. you're already at. Which I'm already so, at. So I'm going to say you actually can't do it. Can, and if I move, I'm going to be... You uh... can clamber up that bookcase <laughs> and throw at him if you wanted. Okay. But you're at a disadvantage to your checks because of that spell he cast on you. What do you do? Um... Rolling so low. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do an athletic. Okay, do, so do you athletic. climb up here. Yeah. One of them gets an attack on you, yeah. and he hits you. Does six points of damage, you take half. He slashes your back open uh, oh. as you go by, cracks open your breastplate, and you can make an athletics check at disadvantage. Oh, no, it's only just strength, right? It's just strength and. All ability checks based on that score. You just feel weak, like your energy is being sapped out of you. Okay, eight. Sixteen, so I take eight, if it's still eight, nine, ten. Fourteen? All right, you do. You manage to clamber up on top of that bookshelf. <laughs> Books are falling out <laughs> as you clamber up. You get up top, and you see him running along the side towards another bookshelf, and you hurl a javelin. Yeah. Uh, you are at a disadvantage for this, though. I am. Nineteen, come on. Roll on. Oh, my God. Uh, so it's twelve. You hurl it, and he turns as that, that javelin comes, and it clangs off the front of his armor and skitters along the ground behind him. I'm playing the odds. I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna take another javelin. No, let me take a hand axe because I never hurl those. Are, you, are your attacks? Can, is it only melee that you can do a second attack? Um, no, nope, just as okay, go ahead, and make your attack. Throw, I'm gonna throw. A, I'm just like throw a hand axe. Yeah, throw so a you're hand throwing axe. Throwing everything you have. <laughs> picking up books. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Improvised weapon. Oh, yes, okay, so, so 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, and it hits him right in the collar, right where his arm is. You like, see a bunch of blood spray out anime style. And he clutches at his throat and goes down to a knee. And he's spitting up blood. You've like hit one of the arteries in his neck. And his blood is spilling out all over the place. He's okay. dying, but he's still standing. He's still standing. Yeah. You have to go with karate. 
I'm going to move. Can I move again? No, no I'm not taking my You're done. So I'm moving. Okay. You're climbing up there as part of it. 14. Did you get 14 on it? Um, no, no, my damage was only um, yes, yeah. 10. 10. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. It's a minion's turn. I'm gonna get right. by a lot. Yeah, yeah, I've got it. Yeah. Uh, one hit against you as they team yeah, up, and I can heal you in a they they time. basically like lunge and pull themselves up and slash at you on top of the bookshelf. Uh, one of them hits you for seven points of damage. Mm. Remember, it's Castle right. three. Castle and uh, this guy actually five ten. I can actually heal you at a third level. He actually gets to attack as well. He misses though. Um, so two attacks on Shriella. I uh, can't. Oh, disadvantage. Aha! <laughs> I'm liking my new friend. So they say four, 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 one. So they all miss. They just cannot connect and an attack on you. <laughs> yeah. All this goodness. Nope. You just bring up your shield. <laughs> you feel the the heavy scimitar blade shatter into you and stagger you back a little bit, but none of them hit this round. Well, one of them hit you. Uh, next. Um. Oh, it's me! So I take my moonbeam and I move it! Okay, how far can it move? Uh, 60 feet. Okay, so you just... And the light kind of pulls up into the ceiling and then shoots straight back down. He gets a con save, right? Yeah. He makes it this time. What?! Roll an 18. That's fine. You still get half damage. (laughs) You still get damage, don't worry. One. (laughs) Hold on. I'm not done. Pick point five. Nine. So five. All right, so he's <laughs> this light hits him, and he gets pushed down to the ground. He's barely he's on his hands and he's coughing up blood, spilling out of his neck, and he's on his hands and he's dragging himself along. Um, who's next? That's me. All right, go ahead. Um, so I'm gonna. What can I do? I'm hit them or not fine. Hold on, hold on. Um. Yep. For my turn, I'm gonna cast protection from good and evil on okay. myself. All right. And then, um, well, that's an action. Okay. Do you want to move or do you want to stay where you are? I can stay where I am. Okay. All right. So you Trust cast out on yourself. So any attacks yeah. against you from an evil source are uh, at a disadvantage. Um, his action. He staggers along. Five, ten, fifteen, and he reaches his hand. He's kind of crawling along, spitting out blood, and he reaches his hand into the ichor. I'm restart, Rishaw. And uh, he no. casts a spell. No, you're supposed to die. No, not a harpy, baby. He's <laughs> probably here. Oh, fuck. That's a lot. Hopefully, those are D4s. And you can see that like he pulls the axe out and blood spills out into the ichor. And he starts pulling energy out of this basin of black ichor. And you hear the harpy scream in pain. And all of his wounds start to heal up. And he shakes his head as that giant gaping wound in his throat starts to close up. And he starts to pull himself back up to his feet. And he looks like he has restored a big chunk of his strength. And he cracks his neck. And that's his action. Okay, well. That's Petunia's turn. <laughs> well, at least if I suck by you guys, you get like a, a advantage to your melees. I yeah. have to get close to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> have to like I keep chasing after him. Um, but I'm at disadvantage anyway for hitting him. Um, what do you do? And if I move out of that area, I'm gonna get, get attack of opportunity. I only. don't really. Yeah. Yeah. So all I can do is keep chucking stuff at him. At him? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> keep, disadvantage. Keep throwing stuff at him at a disadvantage and keep losing my javelins. How many do you have left? I have three javelins and One hand two. Hand. Two hand axes? Two, okay. Because I took an extra. Go ahead and take, make two attack rolls okay. at disadvantage. Okay, so 12, 12 is 6. 
So 18. That hits. You yep. hurl your javelin and it impacts him. Go ahead, roll your damage, mm-hmm. add your rage damage to it. Okay, so 11. Okay, so he stands up and he's got his kind of back a little bit turned. So he's not expecting you to hurl something at him. Yeah. And it hits and it punctures into the back of his shoulder blade, sinks in a good few inches, and he stumbles forward a little bit. Whatever he just healed has just been impacted by that. He staggers forward a little bit. Go ahead and make your second attack with a disadvantage. Oh, Okay, so yeah, uh, so six, seven, eight. Nine, what was your ten, what 11. was the roll the first one? Uh, it was five, so it's it eleven. Okay, yeah. so you you hurl. Uh, were you throwing a javelin or an axe? Mm, I guess an axe. Okay, so you hurl an axe to follow it up from your other hand, and he just di- moves out of the way and it skitters along the ground and disappears down into that dark uh, crevice behind no, you. No, I'm not picking it back. <laughs> well, you can go down there and see what's my, down there. My crevice. Okay, uh, who's up? The minions. All right, so. He he's kind. Of, looks like he's like talking to them while kind of muttering things quietly. Like he might be controlling them a little bit. Um, they start to move around to the edge of the bookcase. Oh, they're gonna try to push me. It's and they are gonna make a combined effort to push the bookcase into the hole. No! Oh my god! I just imagine teetering on top of that. Make a dexterity saving throw. I get actually advantage on Dex. Yes, you can see that this is about to happen. Okay. Ugh. Oh my god, so seven plus three, seven, eight, nine, ten. She goes down that's into a the nine. Oh. oh no, it's a nine. a nine. Sorry, that's a nine. <laughs> Thanks. That's totally so, a nine. Sorry, I'm like. <laughs> okay, so nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. She goes down the hall. <laughs> They push the bookcase down, and you just see Petunia go, ah! and she disappears off the map. All right. I'm so mad. You you can't see that. You just hear a little, but you see Petunia go down. Um, give me a second here. Take 24 points of damage as you fall down into the darkness. Yeah. You get half of that because of. 24, so that's 12. 12. Okay, plus 12. So I'm at 20. And you, you land with a heavy thud on your back <laughs> somewhere deep, deep down in that hole. You're not sure how far you fell, but it was a long way. Yeah. All right. Uh, so they, uh, they still attack you, uh, even though they're at a disadvantage. So in a disadvantage attack against Alex, good thing you did. Disadvantage against Triella. Just, they're swinging at you, but they can't put their full strength into it. There's an energy repelling them back, and they're just, they're completely swinging short. That's their actions. Okay, so I'm gonna, like, run towards Petunia as far as I can go. I can go 35. 5, 10. Do you want to jump over the table go around it? I'm going to try jumping. Okay. Make an acrobatics check. 5. You hit the table <laughs> and you can still dash but you can I'm get... St- I'm dashing! You, no, oh, then you lose your... You don't get an action you, you then. Oh, action. okay, no, I'm just... Okay, I'm so just, you no, stop, I'm just, you I stop here yeah. then. Okay. Uh, they do get attacks against you. Yep. Three attacks, but at disadvantage. That's fine. God damn it. That's what happens. One. Oh, you're lucky. I rolled a 19, but then you rolled a 2. So they all miss as you run past. They just swing at you. You slide underneath them. You run. You try to like jump up on the table. You land it in your chest. Like, oh! And you just stop and run back around the side of it. And that's where you end. But you still have an action. And I move my moonbeam towards the... This- Son of a bitch! <laughs> okay. And he gets a saving throw. He does not. Ha <laughs> Ooh. Okay, this is also... I'm going to use this one now. Five. And four is nine. So, nine. Uh, okay. The beam hits him again as he's, he's pulling 
this spear, this javelin off his back, he pulls it out and doesn't see till that beam envelops him and burns him. Nine, you said? Yeah. Okay. It's pretty weak rolls, but no. All right. Who's up? Me. Alex. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing. Move towards Petunia. Five, ten. You want to try to jump over? I'll try to jump okay. over. I fly for uh, acrobatics. Not 20. Wow. All right, so I'll give you 10 feet of bonus <laughs> movement, so that's 5, 10. I just kid you kid again. You basically just, like, run up and slide across on your knees. 10, Show 15, off. 20, 20. Do you want to run past this guy? Um, He should run away from me if that's the one I think it is. Yeah, it is. He should be running away. All right, so he goes as far as he can straight ahead. Falls on the wall. So you're at the, edge, you're at the edge of the hole right now. Okay, so can I... Would I be within casting distance of? of Petunia? You have no idea. It's completely dark down that hall. Cast hole. on the app. Cast on the app. Sorry? Okay. Okay, fine. From there, I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt, which is 120 feet range. Okay. Um, it is a ranged spell attack against target, so off the guy. So the roll attack, yeah. Um, 10, 16. That hits. Okay, and then it does 4d6 radiant damage. And okay. the next attack roll made against this target for the end of my next turn has advantage. Alright. But, nice. we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> One, five, um, 12. Okay. Um, you hit him uh, with that guiding bolt and he... <laughs> And you hear a bunch, like this bolt of energy of, of light and of your the holy power of mask. It hits him in the side and you hear his armor kind of unbuckle and shatter. Uh, and his ribs break open. You can see it actually explodes in the side and bones and shards bust out the side of his, his skin. And his armor just gets ripped away. He falls down on his side, pukes up a bunch of blood. He lays there. He's not quite dead, but he is very badly injured. Uh, okay, well, okay. that's not good. Uh, it's his turn. Yeah. <sighs> All right. I'm very badly injured. He pulls himself to his feet, and with his dagger, he attacks the harpy. <gasps> no. Oh my God. He plunges the dagger into her chest. And it's like butter. It just goes straight in, and he pierces right in the sternum, and you hear ribs cracking all the way down as he opens up the front of her chest. And she looked like she was almost dead already. And her insides start to rip open. And he doesn't reach into the ick or anything like that. He plunges his hand into her chest and rips out her heart. And she just goes... <laughs> And the song ends, and she falls f into the fluid, and sinks beneath, and she disappears into the into the acre. He turns around and he holds up the heart and starts chanting. That's his action. What a fucking murder! Uh, you're in a hole. I'm in a hole. So now the minions. Can I take get a? Can so I try to get how, out of the hole? Yeah. How how is Ooh, your? Yeah. Um, am I am I at? I'm at a strength disadvantage. Um, so well, it's dex based. No, it'd so. be strength. You have to climb up. Okay. Disadvantage. Oh, God. I got a 19 on that one. Okay, so um, no, it's a 7, 8, 9, 10. 13. All right, so you start clambering up. You are completely in the dark, but you have you can see a bit of light from up there. You know you can climb in that direction. You can make a perception check while you're down here. <laughs> okay, so 15, 15. 19. As you start clambering <laughs> up, you can hear. And it starts to get louder as you clamber up. You can feel it. Something is right underneath your feet. You get halfway up this round. You're 25 feet up. You fell 50 feet. Um, and you hit stones all the way down. You're pretty battered right now. But you get halfway up this round. That's your action. Okay. The skeleton turn and attack. These two do. At least this one can't. He has to just move as best he... God damn you. <laughs> 
He just runs, clambering over this bookcase. He can only get to the fucking hell to here. Um, I wonder what that, like, what is their speed versus the fact that they're not supposed to be within 30 feet of me? Uh, he he can only go as far as he can act like physically. He can't move. Okay, but he can't shots. come back with it. Yeah, okay. exactly. When he has an opportunity to move, he has to move away from you as best he can. Yep. Oh shit. Two attacks at disadvantage. One at regular. What's your armor class? Fourteen. Hits you. Course, nine points of damage as his scimitar jams into your back and rips open your skin. Um, and two attacks against Leah. One is at. Well, not we. Uh, oh, Alex. sorry, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take some getting used to. Just rub it in whenever you get. <laughs> I do as an aglet. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, she's not. <laughs> sorry, I murdered Leah. <laughs> Okay, uh, none of them hit you. Uh, the, with that spell cast, they have a hard time moving getting close to you. That's their actions. Next. So moving Moonbeam is a bonus action, so can I still attack and yeah. then move Yeah, it's it? a bonus action. You can still attack, you can cast another spell that doesn't have a concentration thing on it. Yeah. Move from there, you're going to get it. No, 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 no. I'm going to attack the one that is not at a disadvantage with me. Okay. With my... Well, it, they, it's because they're teaming up. Because if, when you're outnumbered like that, sides. yeah, mm. so it doesn't really doesn't matter. Really matter. Yeah. All right. Well, whichever one is the one that I already hit. Earlier. Are you moving the moonbeam? Yeah, I'm gonna move the moonbeam first. Let's do that first. I'm gonna move the moonbeam to okay. creep. So while he's he's going. It does to not make a saving throw. Ooh. As he's doing his whole like you know temple of doom shit with the yep. heart, not <laughs> a creep. Eight. Cool. So, six and eight. Fourteen? All right. So he's holding the heart, and he's saying something, and there's a black energy starting to surround the heart, and you actually can hear a low thrum in the building, and it starts to rumble. You can feel something is happening in this place. And he's about to lower it down to his mouth when you hit him with that nice. beam and it drops him straight to his knees and you actually from the impact of the beam hitting him and burning him you hear his neck crack <laughs> and he hits the ground dead oh, yes. Thank goodness. good thing you moved the moonbeam on him yeah no kali ma for you <laughs> <laughs> all right and you still have your attack action are they still alive with him are dead still- are they still like us? Oh, oh. Clear the room. So get rid of the trash. Um, alright, alright. Um Okay, well I still have my flame blade. Yep. So I'm just gonna slice and dice. Okay, go ahead. Oh shoot. Uh thirteen. That hits. Sweet! 36, I think, right? Uh, 36, yeah. How long does Flame Blade last? It's a while, right? 10 minutes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's for this whole thing for sure. 4, 1, 5, 10. Okay, so I'm gonna, there was one that was already damaged. I'm just gonna say that's when you hit. Yeah. He explodes into a hum, into 100 shards. The flame <laughs> almost just engulfs it, and the bones scatter along the ground with like rattling along the floor, and he disappears. All right. It's Alex. That Alex. Um, oh, I mixed up the pictures and the. Oh well. That's oh, it started ah. going weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The timing's off, and I reset it. Oh well. Okay. Alex, um, what do you do? I'm going to move over by the hole. Um, put my. Like here. You're kind of at your. Like, right oh, here. there's a shelf there. No, there isn't. Did, okay, there. Yeah. Okay. Away from you them. step up onto the rubble. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take my grappling hook and just like put it down to the ground and like stomp on it, make sure it's in real good. Okay. And then I'm gonna toss this rope down. Okay, that'll be your action. Yeah. All right. So you cl- you find there is a bunch of loose stones, or you step up on it and you pull it under one of the heaviest ones you can find and pull it taut, and you drop the rope, and you hear, and the rope just kind of drops right past you all the way down to the bottom, but it's there. It's right next to you. Okay. Who's up? Uh, Julia. That's me. All right, so you get advantage. Ooh. The gates are disadvantage. You just roll. Ooh, yay. <laughs> yay. 
give everybody a okay. You're giving everybody advantage everywhere. Um, okay, yeah, so it's a really excellent six. spell casting. So twenty. So Petunia pops up. She's all broken and <laughs> and cut up all over the place. She comes up, <laughs> comes back up <laughs> over the top, still in a rage. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Um, you still get an, an action. You oh. pull yourself up onto that yeah. bookcase, and there's a skeleton standing right there. <laughs> I'm gonna just bring, drive my longsword in. It's at him. Okay. It's over my head, I guess. And, um, six. So that would be 19. Okay, that hits. And. Oh, okay. So that would be. Um, Eleven. He just explodes <laughs> into a shower <laughs> of bone. <laughs> just cleave him from top to bottom, and he just <laughs> explodes on all sides. And cl- the bones clatter to the ground. It's a good bonus action. There's oh no yeah, I can do. attack again. Um, so uh, the one that is he kitty corner? Well, I, yeah, he is. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Kitty corner. Um, so melee attacking him. Super pissed. <laughs> really angry. Um, and I don't get advantage to it. No. I don't get advantage. Does that okay. still happen um, even though he's dead? What? The disadvantage on him? No. Oh. No. Yeah, it was a disadvantage to attacking him in particular. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so that would be 11. No, that doesn't hit. You hit against his shield and he staggers back from the impact, but it doesn't uh, go through. Your turn. Uh, to turn, you. This guy moves around here. And two attacks on Triella, one's at a normal. Disadvantaged one doesn't hit. The other one does hit. Uh, for eight points of damage as he jams his scimitar oh. to your side as well. He's just cutting you up. You're bleeding from both sides now. Um, an attack on Petunia, who is not... This guy actually, he can't move. Well, he, 5, 10, 15, 20, he can't actually, he has to go around like that. Uh, does not hit Petunia. He hits your shield with his scimitar, staggers you a little bit, uh, but you manage to get your footing before you fall back down the hole. <laughs> that's their actions. I think that's all of them. Is yeah. that that creep trying to get into the? He's no. running. Oh, he's, he's running away. He's running from away from me, oh, okay. but he can't go anywhere because there's a bookshelf there or something. So he's oh. going around. So he's stuck. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought he was trying to get into the thing. Okay, no, nah, he's just scared of me. Uh, so. Uh, okay, so I am one is at a disadvantage. One's okay, yeah. doesn't matter. You still have uh, Moonbeam. I know exactly. So I'm gonna move Moonbeam over to the one in front of me. Okay. Does not make a save. Great. Die. Eight and three. Eleven. Eleven. He explodes as the beam hits him, and it just gets jammed straight to the ground and turns into a pile of ash. And then uh, I'm at going feet. to take my flame blade and drive it okay. into this guy's throat. I was going to attack one of those guys, but... Uh, 12. No. He's got his arm, he hits the shield that he's got and rakes up and it actually engulfs the shield and sh- it explodes and falls to the ground burning. So he doesn't have a shield anymore, but uh, you didn't hit him. Okay, um, Alex. My turn. I'm going to cast Sacred Flame on uh, the guy by Shreela. Okay. Um, which is... Target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 1d8 radiant damage. Does not. Take, does not make it. Takes four. Okay. What, it, what is it? Just like a fire that hits him? Yep. Okay. Radiant damage. Uh, just kind of this white light fire just explodes from his neck. <laughs> And staggers him a little bit, but he's still standing. Is that a free act, action for you? That is an action. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. yeah it is. But me. you do. Me, um, the guy straight in front of me again. Yeah. I hit him with my short or my long sword. Okay, no disadvantage. You're back to normal. Back to normal. <laughs> back to normal. Uh, oh, I did not make that. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm gonna attack. hit him again. Okay, while well, you're down. Oh, um, I made that one by 25. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <and> <laughs> She's wanted to know how badly huh? she Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, so that would be the five, six, seven, eight. You roll eight total? Yeah. All right, so you hit him, and he's, his arm kind of flies off. He's still standing uh, in place. He's, that's his first damage. No, he got hit before. He explodes. <laughs> <laughs> Bones scatter all over the ground. Um, Their turn. Their turn. turn. 
Uh, this guy continues to go around 5, 10, 15, 20, and he falls into the crevice because it's the only place he can go. Like, and you just hear, ah, and you hear a ball, like he actually goes, ah, and you hear <laughs> and bones shatter somewhere in, in, the, in the darkness. And this one attacks you at disadvantage. No. Foolish him. So I take my moonbeam and just sh- right in front of me. All right, gets a save. Rolls a five. It does not make it. <laughs> You're gonna burn. That moonbeam is doing a lot of fucking damage. Yeah. Shit. Ten. Do we need to keep counting? Four. <laughs> Fourteen. Wow. He explodes. I already have him for four or something. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the ten who would just die. All right. Killed all. Oh, poor innocent little skeletons. <laughs> All right, how are you doing for help? Let's heal you up. Uh, 20, I'm at minus 22. You're, You're minus 22. High. I'm 9 and 8 is 17, 18, 19, 20, 22. Same. So no? oh. Oh. the room goes silent, and that the harpy song has obviously ceased. Um, the heart is laying on the ground by his hand, and he's he's dead. He's definitely dead. Um, what do you do? Um, I'm going to go... Woot slash examine his body. Okay. So you run over and crouch down next to his body. Um, You find that dagger, that ceremonial dagger that he was using. Mm -hmm. Um, It is, it's silvered, and it has a very nice weight to it, and are you taking it? Yeah. Okay, make a wisdom saving throw. Nine. So you take the dagger and it feels really, really good in your hand. It just, the weight is, it's light. It's almost like you are moving air with your fingers. And when you flip it over and turn it, you see at the bottom of the handle is a symbol. And that symbol looks like this. I just gotta, hold on a second here. Welcome to the Cursed Club. I told you you'd be cursed. See that? <laughs> so you can't You're help one of us now. Oh. Is that oh, the that's like kind of what we saw of when we came in? Or is that symbol of... Can I roll? I you can make a knowledge religion. Knowledge religion. 11, 12, 13. That is the symbol of El Sharon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Osiris is the white crown of the cross. Oh, so this is like a... Yeah. Uh, feels feels really good. Um, you yeah, you can write that down. Silvered dagger of like um, Valsharun. Cool. Um, can I look at the book that he was reading? Yeah, sure. Uh, so think? he was carrying it around with him when he hit the ground. He dropped it. Um, well, I actually would have been on that table that got shattered. So you go and you find it. Uh, it is a heavy uh, red bound tome. Looks like it probably has 400 pages in it, and it's got really, really ancient writing, uh, and you don't recognize the writing on it. Uh, you could make an arcana check yeah. or a religion check, whichever one you want. Um, they're both the same to me. Maybe religion? Okay. Ten. No idea. And the whole when you flip open the book, you look inside, it's the same writing. Lots of symbology, lots of uh, cryptic runes, um, but basically that there's nothing on here that you can read or recognize. Uh, this book looks like it's probably a thousand years old. Hmm. It's ancient. <clears throat> Take the book. Okay. Put it in. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like to keep books in my purse bowl, so I put it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to run around and pick up my javelins. Okay, you do that. That and one axe is long gone. Down, down the hole. Um, so you can make a perception check. Can we all? Nope. No, because no, we're busy mm. looking corpses. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just one. 21. You hear a whisper from the pool. Oh. Petunia. Oh, my. <laughs> yes? So you're a little bit of ways away from it. It's a, it's a faint I'm whisper. I'm going, yes. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm here. Hello, this is uh, Petunia. 
Hello, this is Petunia. Hello, you reach Petunia. How can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Um, okay, so I, I go up to the pool a little bit closer. I still got my javelins right here. Yeah. yeah, you picked up all your gear. Okay. <laughs> you <laughs> sure you go this. closer to the pool, and the harpy's body floats up, face looking skyward, floats up to the surface, and her eyes are slowly blinking, and you can see her chest cavity is filled with the ichor, and her mouth very, very slowly starts to move, and it whispers out kind of like this groaning, croaking voice. Does Valsharoon rise? Uh, no, that I can see. Can I have your heart? You say that to her? Yeah. It's not being used. You or can you put it back? This vessel is dead. Oh. So. But through the voice, you hear the song come up out of her throat, like gurgles and bubbling. So would would it be an honor to you if I had your heart? Make a wisdom saving, or make a wisdom, just a uh, insight. Um, so, I have one in um, so, 16. The voice is, you know it's not the harpy that's speaking. It sounds familiar in a way that touches you right down to your soul. The voice is reminiscent of what Shar sounded like when she had taken over Helen. <clears throat> Shar, is that you? And she simply, there's, there's a pause as the song rises and, and grows. And she simply says, four have risen, one more will come. And that is where we're going to end what? this week. 